Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from weatherwatch.co.nz with your top 10 global weather extremes for Friday, October 1st. Can you believe it's October already? We kick off number one with Typhoon Mindul out here in the Pacific Ocean. This is a big storm. Uh, tonight, 137 kilometer an hour winds sustained and gusting to 170. That's gusting over 100 miles an hour. So the storm is pretty big. Tokyo is just off here to the northwest, but there's another island just to the south here, Hashiojima. And this has a population of around about seven and a half thousand people. So on this map right here, here is the storm and here is Hashiojima that I was just talking about. So very, very close as the storm tracks by over the next 12 hours, it will get very close to there. It also gets very close to Tokyo with a population of 38 million people in the greater Tokyo area. But thankfully, as you can see with the tracking here, most of it is offshore but it will brush the Tokyo area with a heavy burst of rain coming in tonight. The worst of the winds offshore, but you can see here these islands have some pretty heavy rainfall totals, over 150, 200 millimeters coming through in a short time. The good news is the storm picks up speed, so it moves away quite quickly as we get into Saturday. Okay, number two on our list switches us over to the Atlantic Ocean. We've got Hurricane Sam right here uh, as it moves northwards towards Bermuda. However, the good news again with this system is it also looks like it will miss making landfall. Notice here you've got a northerly coming down over Bermuda and a southerly coming up here. Well, in the middle, that's the path of least resistance. That's where the storm is most likely to track. And so hopefully Bermuda will miss out on the worst of that weather. But look, it's still a category four. Here's Bermuda right there. So category four to category three, that's a major storm. So dangerous seas, dangerous waves uh, coming in around the island nation there. The wind sustained at 233 kilometers an hour, gusting to 280. So more powerful than uh, Typhoon Mindul, but it's a smaller system. It's not as big as Mindul is. Okay, we move through further south. I mean, we were just talking about Sam here. Now number three takes us to Victor. I don't believe it. Well, that's more for the British people. If you watch, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but anyway, Victor is right here. And as Victor moves along out at sea, Sam's probably taken most of the energy away. So this storm doesn't look as though it'll become a hurricane, although very close to becoming one. So Victor might become one or it might not, but either way, it's out at sea. It's not a problem for anyone. Uh, well, other than boats. Number four, okay, takes us over back to India and Pakistan. Now we've been tracking the storm for a week now as it moved across India, uh, very close to Mumbai. Now it's just passed near Karachi and it's moving out into the Arabian Sea, which you don't often see storms in that area. They do happen from time to time. But the rainfall totals around Karachi, that's pretty significant. We're talking about 80 to 100, maybe 110, 20 millimeters of rain just in the next 24 hours. So there could be some flooding and we've got thunderstorms in that zone as well. And the storm is tracking slowly out to see whether it reaches Oman. We'll keep an eye on it, that's for sure. Number five on our list takes us just a little bit further over. That's what we were just talking about. We move further across India and now we're taking a look at this next storm. Uh, it's also been stalled for the last few days, just dropping a huge amount of rain, and it's not going anywhere fast. When you take a look at the rainfall accumulation map here, you can see the circular nation, uh, circular nature to it as it forms here just near to Patna, which is also uh, right near, in the state of Bihar. So this storm is remaining in place, stalled for another day or so, delivering huge rain in this north to northeastern part of India. Number six takes us down to the southern hemisphere and we've got Australia with two big low pressure zones, one off to the north, uh, sorry, sorry, the southwest down here around Perth and the other one to the southeast. To the north, you've just got the normal tropical convergence zone, but down here, these are low pressure zones producing hundreds of thousands of thunderstorms or lightning uh, strikes in this eastern side. Plenty of rain as well. It is drifting out to sea over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. But as you can see here on the rain map, plenty of rain in Queensland and New South Wales and Victoria, but the thunderstorms mostly up now in Queensland, clearing away from New South Wales as we head in towards Saturday. But over in Western Australia, there's the next burst of weather coming in from the Southern Ocean slash Indian Ocean. 
Moving on to the Northern Hemisphere again, back up to the United Kingdom, Ireland, Iceland, and parts of Norway. We've got a big stormy system out here, which is driving in wind and rain across a number of places. Uh, so expect the temperatures to be down as this pulls down northerlies from Greenland, across Iceland, and straight into Scotland, parts of Ireland and the UK. So this is quite an interesting storm to watch. It's not going to produce too much in the way of severe weather, we don't think. A fair bit of rain though coming through across all of these regions. And just to prove that I do know a little bit about what I'm talking about, some rain across the English Channel, the North Sea, the Norwegian Sea, and over here in the Labrador Sea, not much going on. Okay, number eight on our list, thunderstorms convergence across America. Some really big downpours at the moment and thunderstorms through the Midwest, coming down into parts of Oklahoma, Texas, and even over to New Mexico and into Mexico itself. So pretty active and stormy across a large portion of the central and southern parts of the United States. They've had Thunderstorms around for about a week or two now, lingering in these southern areas. In fact, you could even argue since Hurricane Ida came through, it's been very humid and wet with thundery weather across this part of America. And you can see here, this is an interesting map, but if you take a closer look, you can see the winds swirling around. This is going into parts of Mexico and, sorry, into parts of New Mexico and Texas. And the reason why I'm showing you this is just to show you how the wind, which is what we call that convergence and instability creating these thunderstorms, you can just see the wind either bubbling up and spreading away or mixing around with each other. That's why we're seeing a fair bit of instability. Further to the north, number nine, we've got snow falling around the Rocky Mountains, very close to Calgary. Places like Lake Louise and Banff will be getting a dusting of snow up on the mountains and ranges. And further out to the west in British Columbia, also snowing, snowing up towards uh, parts of Alaska as well. An isolated thunderstorm on Vancouver Island. And hello to everybody in Duncan, seeing as that's my last name, uh, which is somewhere around here uh, near Victoria. And number 10, we were talking about convergence just before in the United States. We've got it in Africa as well. That's the equator. South of the equator, there is a line of convergence through these inland areas producing a lot of thunderstorms. Now down here around Cape Town, just offshore, you've got high pressure. So only a little bit of wet weather coming in for Cape Town. But when you take, take a look at the rain and thunder map, you can certainly see all these thunderstorms through a large portion, starting right up near um, Tanzania, down through Zambia, over towards um, Namibia and South Africa, bit borderline, but we were talking about this the other day around Johannesburg and out towards Durban. That's the area with all those downpours and thunderstorms. Madagascar, just a couple of showers over there, nothing too serious. And that's it for us for today. Our final image of the day, Typhoon Mandil tonight, Friday night, very close to Tokyo, which you can see in that green circle. So very close to 37 million people. Thank goodness most of it looks as though it'll be offshore, but those right on the coastal area could get damaging winds and very heavy rain, could be slips and flooding. So all the best to those of you in Japan. That is all from me. Thanks for all the support this week. Have a great weekend and we'll see you again on Monday, uh, which is Sunday night for the Americas.